What it do guys welcome back to the channel here we are with another reaction video by Jubilee this one is intriguing because I've kind of asked my friends about this when we had discussions about this is abortion murder like this is a touchy sensitive subject and so I'm intrigued at what both sides have to say. I'm intrigued to hear both points. And hey, if, at the beginning of the video or at the end, let me know where y'all stand in that comment section. Drop drop how you guys feel about it. You know what I'm saying? Also, make sure you hit subscribe. All right, what we got? The video contains a discussion or a reference to sexual assault, rape, and other Is the end topics. goal here that abortion be illegal and it be criminalized and removed as a resource forever from this country? Is that the... Illegal and unthinkable. Illegal and unthinkable. Yes. So it is criminalized and stigmatized. Ooh. I already know this is going to be a discussion. Right? This, this discussion going to get into I was, I'm almost scared to react to it because how hard both sides go. If you go. agree, step forward. If you disagree, stay put. Nobody likes abortions. I don't think anybody likes them. I don't think anyone likes it. I think yeah. they use it, and they might use it incorrectly from my perspective. But I don't think anyone likes an abortion. Like, they're not, like, jumping for joy for it. Yeah. I think right. it is a very physically taxing process to go through, and I don't think anyone would want to intentionally have an abortion. I think those who get an abortion, most of the time, it's because they need to. Mm -hmm. It's a harmful narrative on both sides of the conversation mm -hmm. to say that you know women celebrate abortion. Um, I think it creates a prejudice around women who do get abortions. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I don't think that it's good to kind of um, minimize the decision of abortion um, from either side, from either perspective, so. Can the step forward? Like, I, don't, I don't think anybody particularly wants to get an abortion or likes abortions, you know what I'm saying? They just, they, you think about your circumstance or the situation that you're in and you make the best decision that you can in that situation. But I don't think anybody just, yay, I'm getting an abortion, you know what I'm saying? If that makes sense. If that's how they, they're, they're they meaning to ask the question. Forward? I'm intrigued what these guys got to say. Um, I think if you asked me this question maybe several years ago, I would have said nobody likes abortion. But I think in today's climate, it is much more celebrated. As a pro-life person, I've had people tell me that they will dedicate their next abortion to me. Um, instead of helping women, they will have an abortion. I've, had, I've heard very wow. similar responses to you. Things like, um, I'll, I'll donate to Planned Parenthood in your name. And there's other pages like Shout Your Abortion that um, openly celebrates abortion rights. Wow. Yeah. I celebrate abortion and I think that campaigns like Shout Your Abortion aren't about like getting in your face, mm -hmm. but women who choose to have abortions uh, suffer a lot of stigma and trauma mm. from people who stand outside clinics and have grotesque <laughs> images and literally, you know, damning your soul. Um, abortion as a medical procedure and resource is something that I do celebrate. It's a human right, and mm. I love abortion. Um, I my say name I is love Rocky, you she, her pronouns. I'm from Austin, Texas, and I am very pro-abortion. I think that legislation like SB8 opens the door and the path towards handing over hold on, hold on. our- It is the first time a state has successfully imposed a six-week abortion ban since Robert B. Wade and the first abortion to restrict the first abortion restriction to rely on enforcement by private individuals through civil laws. Oh, wow. Like SB8 opens the door and the path towards handing over our bodily autonomy to the state. I don't understand how um, anyone can justify using their personal beliefs to take away the rights of others. My name's Abby. I'm from Orlando, Florida, and I'm an abolitionist of human abortion. We have to ask the question of what makes humans valuable. So because my worldview as a Christian gives me a foundation for human worth, and because I believe scientifically fetuses are human beings from the moment of conception, I am against abortion. 
I understand. So, so you gotta understand the personal groups. But I think they're groups, like she said, they're not throwing in your face because, because women, know what I'm saying? You have people yelling at them outside of abortion clinics, slurring at them. And that's why they're saying, I'll dedicate my next abortion to because because you're, you're literally, know what I'm saying? Yelling hateful slurs at them at the moment. They're, they're, you know what I'm saying? You're not being nice. So, so they're not, they're not, they're trying to say, think of something mean to hurt you. And so I don't think that, the, but I think because there's, so, there's, there's, there's such a stigma behind it, that they don't want to like, don't wanna, they don't want to feel bad about it. They don't want to feel guilty. I think that's what it is. That's what I think. What's this? It says, are human beings from the moment of conception? I am against abortion. Biological fathers should have an equal say in abortions. Agreed. Agreed. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, I think so. I mean, it's consistency. Like, if we're defining that as a life, if it is a life, to put a kid up for adoption, both parents have to agree. I agree. Ooh, I, I have that. talked to lots of women who've had abortions, and I've talked to lots of men who are hurting. They're, they're completely heartbroken. They would have raised the baby. They wanted to raise the baby. They begged for the life of the baby. And they obviously created the baby together, but only one of them gets to decide if their child gets to live or die. I would like to say, from more of an honestly feminist perspective, um, men have responsibility as the other parent of that child. Ironically enough, a lot of the times when um, pro-choice people put the focus completely on the woman, they strip the man of all his parental rights and responsibilities. And I think that's why actually a lot of men who are pro-choice are pro-choice because they don't want to have those fatherly responsibilities that they will have say. once the child is born. Yeah. You left us, man. I want to know why. <laughs> I want to yeah. yeah. <laughs> hear everybody before I weigh in. I want to hear what everybody says. I'm mad conflicted about this because I, feel, I strongly I'm feel like a man should not have control over what a woman does with her body. I more so have an issue with when a man doesn't actually want that baby. She wants it and then expects this man to like be the ultimate provider and mm. child care and all that, this extra I, stuff, I should, right? But in I should be careful. Be ca be careful, Asher. And <laughs> child care and all this extra stuff, right? <laughs> but in the case of if the man wanted it, the baby and the woman didn't want it, he has no say. So I think that's a fucked up dynamic. So it that's is. why I was going back. It is. <laughs> well, you should have stayed then. It sounds like you're, it sounds like you're for men having more rights. I just, I just, I just can't force a woman to be like, no, you have to do this because I think it's f***ed up. It's her body. I don't but it's also like a it's child's right life in there. It's not just her body. It's a child's and life. And it's in there. also but, your son or daughter. I think truly, in my eyes, it's like it's my body. I get to do what I want with it, and I don't think anyone, including the person, the other person who's involved, should have a say whether I want to keep it or whether I want to get an abortion. My name is Asher. Uh, I currently reside in Las Vegas and I'm for pro-abortion. I used to be against abortion until an uh, unwanted pregnancy happened uh, to me. If you know for a fact that you're not even going to be the best parent for that child or you can't provide for that child or maybe you're just fearful and don't want to pop a child out of you or, or just whatever reason that you have, I feel like you shouldn't have to go through with that. You still have that choice over your life, your body. I feel that. So on that question, uh, I feel like it, I mean, like I'm, I'm more Asher. You can't tell someone what to do with their body. Where where the girl, whatever she said, I feel like it's my body. Nobody, even the person that that helped me create the child, shouldn't be able to. You know what I'm saying? Have what? And I feel like if it's that, I'm still with Asher. Like if it's gonna be like that, where you get to choose whether or not what to do with your body, you can't choose to say. That know what I'm saying? Uh, well, you have these financial responsibilities. If the if the man doesn't want it, like that's a me it is a messed up dynamic. Now, don't get me wrong. I believe each parent should be there for the child. I firmly believe you lay down and make that child like you be there for that child for to count on. But I, I the, the dynamic woman kind of has a power has a power in that situation. You don't as a man you don't really have any power. And so that, that's just where I'm, where I'm at with that. Go through that, you still have that choice over your life, your body. I have had an abortion. The way she was talking about it, I feel like I could. A few months ago, I um, found out that I was pregnant. When I imagined myself finding out I was pregnant for the first time, 
I wanted it to be celebrated. And in that moment, I felt such severe anxiety. Mm. And I felt, and having that, I felt I, like the entire time I was just in a lot of emotional pain, grieving, I was debating about myself, about what, how I would be looked at or how I would view mm. myself after getting the procedure done. Uh, I, feel that. I ain't gonna lie, I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm gonna be real careful with my words. It's clearly, as a man, I can't have an abortion. But uh, my girlfriend, um, we've had two abortions. She didn't really want to have a baby. I didn't really want to have a baby. And I know for me, I don't want to be that seen as that deadbeat father mm. person, but I knew I wasn't really trying to sacrifice my own dreams or what I was trying to accomplish to be a dad at that point. I think that's definitely like one of the biggest things to consider because I wasn't in any kind of position to be a mother, yeah. you know? So it's like, I want to get my shit together before I can have a baby and give it a, a life that it deserves. Mm. Um, when I found out I was pregnant, the person that I was with at the time, they were like, I will support you in every way, but I will not be able to be there for you if you decide what? to keep it. And that definitely influenced what? my choice. It was one of the hardest decisions way. I've ever had to make. I like to think I'm a pretty generous, like loving person and the names that I've been called for even getting one, I've gotten evil, psychotic, demented. My name is Christine. I'm from Denver and I am on the anti-abortion side. So when I was 20 years old, I was a college student and I found myself in an unplanned pregnancy and I was pressured to abort very heavily, not only by my wow. child's father, but uh, by those around me. And um, I, I heard my son's heartbeat and it, it, there was no debate. It was a life. His life was not mine to take. Um, this is part of why I am very pro-life because I know many women are pressured to abort when they don't want to. Can they disagree a step forward? Mm -hmm. I want to hear what everybody has to say. Your story is absolutely powerful and your story as well. I think something we probably all can agree on is abortion usually is a symptom of a bigger problem, whether it's finances, whether it's uh, stability of housing, whether it's relationship issues. My perspective mm, is that we address those issues instead of ending the life of a child. I disagree. Um, I don't think that abortion is a symptom. People should be able to access abortion when, how, wherever they want or need. I don't think that it's a problem to be fixed. I think that is still stigmatizing. But I think the biggest thing is that there are birth control methods out there and abortion Ooh. should not be a birth control method. I think that that's very Ooh. critical. And, and to hear that, you know, you weren't celebrated. I think life should be celebrated with everybody. I'd like to call attention to that point too, just the fact of using abortion as birth control. I thank you for everyone sharing their stories so far. I didn't step forward, I haven't had an abortion myself, but I am a survivor of rape. I was on birth control at the oh. time and I still made the decision with my medical team that birth control is not 100% effective and I wanted oh. access to emergency contraceptive to take on top of that. And had that pregnancy or any of those methods failed, I would have chosen to have an abortion and I'm very grateful that I had access to those resources and I'm so mindful that there's so many women who don't. Well, I think it gets down to the heart of the issue here. You know, what mm -hmm. is the unborn? Which scientifically the embryo is from conception. The beginning of human personhood is the moment when a human is first recognized as a person. These are differences of, there are differences of opinion as to the precise time when human personhood begins in the nature of People do have different opinions on when they actually, you know what I'm saying? It's a person. When they recognize it for being a person, a baby for being a soul. Part of the issue here, you know, what is the unborn? Which scientifically the embryo is from conception, a living whole organism with distinct DNA. As a Christian, I come from a worldview that says that every human being is, has dignity and worth. Not to disrespect any, any religion in general, but in my eyes, that's just pushing a belief onto someone rather than mm. actually stating a real, real concrete fact. So um, scientifically, I'm pro-life because of science, not because of religion, but scientifically, I believe that life does start at conception. I don't think it makes sense to put life beginning at any other place during pregnancy. Um, doing so usually ends up saying that a already born person isn't alive, um, such as consciousness, heartbeat, etc. There are many pro-life people here, here from the science perspective um, who, who are not led by religious motives um, at all or partially. 
I am Ayala, I'm 18 years old, I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina, and I am anti-abortion. One misconception that I deal with pretty frequently is that we're all Christian, white, old men, and as a you know Jewish woman, um, younger, I really want more voices like mine to be seen in the anti-abortion movement uh, because I think we have new perspectives that would help kind of bridge the gap and have us find a little bit of middle ground between our two uh, opposing sides. Uh, I feel like uh, in that situation, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Because there's a lot of babies that are, foster, that are uh, not foster care, but that are not being adopted, that are in the system, right? And it's like, I feel like if you're that pro-life, then like... You, you should be able to help adopt these children because because you want them all to be born and you want to take the choice away from other people so go adopt your child that's that's me go adopt a child know what I'm saying so so they're not all they're not stuck in the system that's me uh, but I feel like if you get raped or or that's not your choice you you are not choosing that you you do not have the responsibility I I cannot fathom that the responsibility of having someone's child who, who physically raped me, who I didn't want anything to do with that person. I, I'm sorry, that's me on that one. But uh, let's find keep a little bit of middle ground between our two uh, opposing sides. Abortion is murder. That's a big one. It depends on when you recognize it. I think it, it is murder. Person. I think. Um, <clears throat> for the abortionist more so than the woman. I think a lot of women don't necessarily know exactly how an abortion procedure is formed. I've had a girl even tell me that at 20 weeks, a baby is just a clump of cells and that's just not true. I, I do believe now there might be cases where you know, some women might be unaware of, of what, what's going on in an abortion. But by and large, I think it, especially with the advent of the internet and so much education out there, many of them do know that the life, that there's a life inside of them and they want to, to end that life, whether they call it or or not. Hard disagree. Mm -hmm. Absolute disagree. Okay. Um, I've definitely met a lot of teenage girls who grew up in our generation who believe that abortion is normal, a fetus is a clump of cells, and there is no human life in the womb. They don't tell you when you go in for an abortion consultation, this is a child and this is a human life and that's what's going to be happening. I have a hard time believing that if most women knew they were killing a child they would do that. I don't think women in America are that malevolent. I, I think it's very irresponsible and very hurtful huh? to say, oh, this woman's a murderer because she had an abortion. What? I, I, because they don't, they think it's just a clump of sales. And so, you, I mean, I, I, I don't agree that you should be forced to have a child that you do not want. Like, like you don't have, uh, but no, no, so I, I feel like people, you know what you're doing when you go in there, right? Is that? Do you really not? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like you know. But and very hurtful to say, like, oh, this woman's a murderer a because she had an abortion. I don't. By being a murderer, that's a crime, cuz. You go to At jail least for that. my personal experience, the people who worked there were very understanding. They let me know mm. there is a child that will that could come out of you in nine months. Are you sure you want to do this? Mm. I knew there was a child in my body. I knew I could have That's a child in nine months. And I knew that that child can grow old and be their own person. Too. But I made that choice because I am allowed to have that choice. And mm. especially you, you are a, a white man You and you are not allowed to say what I can do with my body nor any of these other women who are able to carry a child. I think that's so dangerous. I think that's so dangerous to say that you can't say because of your sexuality. Yeah, I'll, you can't even point out because you are a white man. Like You, you should have put every because nobody can tell you. If you're going to say nobody can tell you what to do with your body, just say that. Don't point him out like that. Don't. Don't do that. Child. I think that's so dangerous. I think that's so dangerous to say that you can't say because of your sexuality, who you are as a male or female, or how you believe as a religion, you can't define what's right and wrong. I think that's misguided. You can and we shouldn't take that opinion. into policy. I think what she's if saying child, is that whatever that right your your morality is, I think that you know folks are entitled that, that we have freedom of religion, we have freedom from mm -hmm. religion. Whatever your that's... moral value is, the issue is trying to turn that into legislation and putting but it on someone else. We legislate what's right and wrong all the time. I'm thinking even medically, you know, like for indigenous women, they're two times as likely to die from pregnancy-related mm. complications. Who's responsible for that murder if she's forced to carry that baby? Well, I would be, I would be all for it. Whoa, whoa, whoa! 
That's a... All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it go. That's a good question. Who's responsible for that murder if she's forced to carry that baby? Well, I would be, I would be all for working on legislation altogether where, you know, if the woman's been taken advantage of or mm. if they've uh, incest situations or if her life's at risk, we, we can keep those options on the table. So all of a sudden, because she could potentially die, we'll make legislation where she can't abort that baby and all of a sudden you're pro-abortion? No, I'm not pro-abortion. I personally would not like her to choose that option. I think science so has come... No, 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 no. I think science has come a long way where... That, that's, hey, that's a loaded... That's a low, that's what you call a loaded question, bro. You can't do that. You, cause either way, you know what I'm saying? You're trying to get on this case with either, there's no right answer. That's a question where there's no right, you can't do that, bro. Is that option? I think science so has come. No, 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 no. Right? I think science has come a long way where that that's vastly not the case anymore within our medical community, and we need to continue to increase funding for those mechanisms to provide more research on how to keep the woman alive in this situation. What is the is the end goal here that abortion be illegal and it be criminalized and removed as a resource forever from this country? Is that the illegal and unthinkable? Illegal and unthinkable. Yeah. So it is culturally culturally for women. We want women to have resources first of all to where they don't need an abortion and then abortion for the abortionist resources. is criminalized so an abortionist could go to jail for performing it women should not be criminalized because at the end of the day women are victims of abortion as well my name what is sebastian king and i am anti-abortion side my mom had an unplanned pregnancy because she was taken advantage of from the time she was 12 oh, wow. to 15 and she was in and out of state custody and the judge even encouraged her to have an abortion and told my mom that she won't amount to anything in life if she goes through with this pregnancy. Because she chose life, I'm, that's the only reason I'm here today, and that's my mission is to ensure that all life is protected. Oh Abortion gosh. should be accessible to rape and incest survivors. They don't even think, oh, wow. If you're pregnant from your brother or your cousin or your father, especially if it wasn't consensual or even if it was, you should still have that option to abort the baby. And especially if you've I'm been intrigued. raped, there are I'm some I'm intrigued what the disagreeers have to say. Ah, this intrigues me on this one. Option to abort the baby. And especially if you've been raped, there are some people who have that thought like, oh my God, like, what if I, I, when I look at my child, I relive that trauma. That's a reminder. And, and not saying that's how all rape victims view it, but it's just mm. like, some women have that fear. Okay, so I was raped for four years of my life um, violently, uh, more times wow. than I can count. Um, and I did get pregnant when I was 15. Um, my rapist threatened me with abortion multiple times, um, used that as a tool to keep me in his power. Uh, if he had the power to terminate evidence, he had power against me. Um, I did end up losing her, but I wanted her very badly. I named her Rahail, um, which is Rachel in English. Um, and I think it's very important to humanize people who are conceived in rape because uh, they're walking around right now. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. And I think it is, it's very insulting to place that on a human being. Um, I think that humans, no matter how they are conceived, are human beings and they deserve mm. to be respected and their lives deserve to be respected. I, I agree because that's me. That. I agree hundred yep. percent. And, and my mom has always told me she doesn't view me as um, his, even on my birth certificate, he's not my father, so. Also, I wanna tap on what you said, though, cause you said you really wanted to keep your daughter. And although you don't, you know, see it as the rape baby and stuff, other people who also go through that traumatic experience may actually see it like that, right? You wanted that, but there's other people that had their a, a choice taken away from them. And they shouldn't be shamed at going through this and even having to live through that experience of the rape baby. You know hey, hold on, hold on. Asher might be my guy. That's I feel like Asher feels like you wanted that. No, you didn't want to get wrecked. I'm not saying say you wanted the baby, but there's a lot of people who they didn't have the choice. They didn't want the baby. It wasn't their choice to have sex. Know what I'm saying? They they, they were a victim of rape, and it's not disrespectful to the to the, to the kids who are born out of that. And that's not what it. But it's saying I didn't even have a choice in how this baby was made. But you're telling me I have to. I, I'm forced to have. I agree. I'm with Asher on this one, man. Shame that going through this, and even having to live through that experience of the rape baby. You Here's know the I mean? thing: when you get an abortion as a reaction to rape, you are continuing continuing the cycle of violence. So you were raped. That was a violent experience that happened to you. That wasn't your fault. You're hurt. You've been victimized. 
Um, yes. Why is it fair to further victimize someone else because you are hurt? No, but, why you, is it but not you're seeing it as a someone, no, man. I'm putting myself in a woman's shoes or a human being's shoes, right? You take my choice away. You write me. And who, for all you know, I might be a struggling, struggling human being, right? Making $8 an hour or something like that crazy bills. I might be living in my car. I might be sleeping in the dumpster behind McDonald's. But now because of your opinion, right, and my traumatic experience, I get shamed because I don't want to bring this life into the world, bro. Oh, but you should give birth and then put it in foster care if you don't want it, bro. I want to touch on that too, just for a second, like for trauma. I think absolutely what I am passionate about is giving people the choice. And for you, you thought a lot about your choice and you wanted that pregnancy. And I'm really sorry that you lost that child. And I also thought a lot about for myself when I went through that experience, what choice would be best for me. And for me, that was not carrying the child. And I think trauma is such an interesting thing for me, not having control over a child growing inside of me and changing my fate of my life. You know, yes. that would be more traumatic than the initial experience. Crazy. We don't know how people are going to react, but I do fight and would want them to have the choice to do what's best for them. I think a strange misconception that people have about people who are pro-abortion is that we don't have respect for life or we don't care about children. Mm. That's absolutely not true. I respect life very much. Unfortunately, I've also seen a lot of uh, negative aspects of our systems in the US, like the foster care system. It's out of that respect that mm -hmm. I believe people should have the right to choose an abortion. Mm -hmm. America offers resources to help you raise a child. Yeah, I just, I, I haven't looked into There's it There's tax benefits to, to having children. I think there was also, uh, you know, in the latest round of the COVID benefits, money, no. there was funding for women who've had children. Yeah, and there are so many um, Christian charities and so many different organizations that, that want to help women, you know, and, and the resources are there. Also, government resources. There are government resources that help you take care of children. Um, are there enough? That is a different question. I was basically just agreeing with what you said, because Section 8, food stamps, free health care, school programs, and whatnot. Like, there are resources. Yeah, are there enough? For food that's, how, that's how my mom survived yeah. when she had me, because of government assistance. So yeah. that's, the only way she, that's the only way she made it, because of that. I have been a pregnant teenager, and I've also been a teenage mother on welfare and unemployed. The number of resources that are available state to state is something that is atrocious. But what it comes down to is a lot of time and energy. Uh, the That's choice between saying, do yeah. I go to work and it's get the money to pay financial. rent or do I go and I sit in the office or do I go to this nonprofit who's requiring me to fill out this application and come to a meeting in the daytime when I'm supposed to be working. So you see it kind of like a job, like you're clocking in to fill in paperwork it and is. you're receiving your check. It is. Low resources and creating these sort of impossible hurdles and more barriers for people who are already experienced them to overcome to get the help is not a help at all. And I feel like a completely like separate conversation is it is extremely hard to be a single mother who is also a woman or person of color and to get resources, especially black women. They are notoriously, even in wow. that room where they're giving birth. Black women are three times more likely to die from a pregnancy related cause than white women. Multiple factors contribute to these disparities, such as variation in quality healthcare, underlying chronic conditions, structural racism, and implicit bias. Wow. They are notoriously, even in that room where they're giving birth, they they aren't taken seriously. Well, I just want to say one thing because I think it's important. So I might not look it, but I'm Native American, have my Cherokee card and everything. We have universal health care in the Indian community. And um, when she went to have me as a child, they told her in that universal health care system that she's not, she doesn't, she's not allowed to have pain medicine because that's a luxury. So she got it through government assistance. So that, that, mm. that, that's a big deal that the United States is, uh, more for the, the Native American community. That is I'm glad such we're discussing. No, no, no. I'm not saying that's acceptable. I'm not saying that's acceptable. But I'm saying like it exists. It, it exists. There, that that story exists. But there are there are literal reservations out there that do not have water, do not have electricity, do not have internet. That is in 2021. Are those not resources to raise a child? So let's Why address the government that not, instead of yeah, killing that, the baby. To say that the, right. government, the, that. the government. The question was: Does the government provide resources? No. Does America provide resources? No. That's unacceptable.
Mm. Abortions? I don't know. I, mean, I don't know how I felt on that. Bro, this is like, I, I'm listening to both sides and I'm hearing good points from both sides. So, see where I stand at the end of this. Uh. She says, no, that's unacceptable. Abortions will continue to happen regardless of the law. They would plan to break a law. You <laughs> feel That happened less. That ain't never gonna change. I think of course they'll continue ha to happen. Uh, a law doesn't mean that something is not gonna happen at all anymore, just like rape, just like murder, just like anything else we've outlawed. Just because they're still going to happen doesn't make it right. But if you criminalize uh, doctors and abortion providers, right? That means we no longer have providers. That means abortion is no longer an option. And that by default, the way that this country and especially my state legislates will mean, and it has happened, we have precedent, uh, a woman who tries to self-induce or who tries other non-medical methods to have an abortion can and has been criminalized. What is the policy that doesn't just absolutely take away the right that people have to access an abortion regardless of what their, their beliefs are. Yeah. If, if that child is a human being deserving of the right to life, then yes, it should be criminalized just like murder of two-year-olds and five-year-olds and adults is criminalized, right? But that's, that's, so, that's, 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 that's so different, though. You, got people that's, different? you have people that's two years old already out the womb. They've been here for years, right? And then you got these cells. Can I ask you something? Go ahead. When does it stop being a clump of cells? Personally, I'm not worried about the clump of cells. Though. Decades of medical research has not been able to land on that and answer. And I'm trying to answer your question. As far so as do the you cells, believe that abortion should be allowed all nine months of pregnancy? I do feel well, like like that's a big 2019 woman under 20. So, so, so I will agree on that. But why is abortion? Why is Wait, but let's not act like the majority of women are just deciding to get abortion at like 92.7 point seven. And ninety two point seven percent of abortions are either that they're going to die giving birth or it's under some medical. We're performed at 14 and 20 weeks gestation, even fewer were performed at, uh, at past 21. And so that is, let's not act like, oh, okay, oh, yeah, okay, I got you. Uh, it's either that they're going to die giving birth or it's under some medical circumstances because no i doubt even myself i doubt that i would get to a six month seven month mark and then decide oh actually i don't want to make this commitment i feel like there's a lot of this conversation like when does it become wrong as if we're actually this going to get an abortion at that time a lot of the um what pro-life people would consider hostile uh, pro-choice um, comments and things like that are a response to hostile pro-life people. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that it doesn't get talked about on our side because we don't like to fight each other. Um, but I think it's an important point because I've seen absolutely disgraceful comments made towards women sure. who are going into clinics, you know, who are obviously in a very traumatizing situation um, and you don't know what that woman is mm. going through and they're shouting obscenities at her. And I, that, that's appalling. And I think that we need to take responsibility as pro-life people to understand they've experienced so much hurt from our side of the community. And I I agree with that I think but from our side of the aisle folks are very passionate because they believe that's a life they believe that's a baby and they want to do everything they can to save that child but I agree that our rhetoric needs to be there as a resource and another option and we can do that peacefully and respectfully as well I think on any side of any controversial issue you're always going to have those extremists same thing on mm. the pro-abortion side people are always going to have feelings and people are always going to fight on that level right that was I think a it's about great coming up discussion here and like what uh, that, that actually one was makes really good common sense personally for me and how do we uh, come up with policy that doesn't force folks to live by that, uh, other people's I say values. Pro -abortion or not. I would say pro -choice. You should, as a human being, you should have the choice. You should have. And then what about the choice of the human being inside? I, I just pro -choice. I, I think pro choice. Uh, just because you should, you should have that that option. You should have that choice and. Um, 
It's your body. I'm not going to tell you what to do with your body. I'm not going to tell a stranger what to do with their body. They choose what to do with their body. Uh, know what I'm saying? A great rapper. No, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that. But uh, it, it's your body. It's your choice. It, but she, as a case, it should be a couple of choice. It should be a couple of choice. Uh, but it's y'all's choice with what to do with y'all's life. Know what I'm saying? And so uh, I'm not going to force you to have a kid because there's so many kids in, in the system. There's so many kids who, who have need to be adopted, who aren't adopted, you know what I'm saying? And so many kids get forgotten in the system. And so I feel like, you know what I'm saying, if you are that, if you're an extremist for pro-life, then you should go adopt a kid that, that's in the system. Uh, so so there's less kids in the system, right? Uh, but that's all we got for this one. Uh, I'll see y'all in the next one. It's your boy, Didier. Out.